If your pension is only 900 per month and you have never lived overseas in a third world country before, then don't expect to be able to do that right away or ever. The average Westerner might be able to do it eventually, but not very easily. It takes time to develop these skills and very few people have enough patience. This video is meant to give you ideas about what to do if you really want to try living overseas and you have a limited monthly budget or pension. In this report, I'll explain one way that someone who has never tried living cheaply overseas before might be able to accomplish it eventually. After a brief explanation of the problem you're facing, I will explain how I would do it if I were starting over again today. You see, I have guest stars come on my channel and talk about how they are able to live cheaply overseas in various third world countries. My guests share numbers like 500, 600, 800, 900, and even 1200 per month for basic living costs, including only their rent, food, and transportation. But those numbers will be almost impossible to achieve for most Westerners. In fact, many of you will never be able to hit those numbers. How do I know? Because I don't meet that many people living overseas that are able to live on those kinds of numbers. Most have more money. Most people I meet overseas, foreigners I'm talking about, are living on numbers between about $1,500 and $2,500 per month. And the truth is, very few people are willing to even try to live on $900 per month, especially since the overwhelming majority of people that I meet living overseas have higher pensions. Since the overwhelming majority of people I meet living overseas seem to be receiving these larger pensions, they have very little need to even try to live on less. There's an old saying that necessity is the mother of invention. They don't need to live on 900 a month, so why would they go through all the trouble of learning how to be so frugal? They don't. I meet people all the time living overseas that say things like, you can't live here on less than 1800 per month in this country. But if I ask the same person, how much is your pension or Social Security, they usually say their pension is about the same as their average monthly cost of living. If their pension is 1800 they are not usually trying to live on much less. They are just trying to keep their monthly expenses below their pension. Rarely do people with $1,800 a month pensions try to live on a thousand per month. So what do they really know about it? Maybe they're not the right person to ask. So who really knows the minimum cost of living in any given country? It's probably not going to be foreigners moving to that country for a lower cost of living. It'll be people making less than a thousand per month. You see, locals know how to live in that country on local wages. They don't have any other choice. They are often making less than $1,000 per month. You do not need to trust me or anyone else on this. You'll find information online about wages in almost every country in the world. If someone's pension is greater than what locals make, then they might be able to learn how to live on their pension in that country. I'm not suggesting that you need to live on what the average local makes. Your pension is probably higher than that, hopefully. In some of these countries, at the time of this report, there are locals living on 500 per month for a family of four. If you think that is impossible, then look it up. What I'm suggesting is that locals may be able to help you understand why you are hemorrhaging money every month and they are not. You may not need to adopt all of their ideas, but understanding how they do it would give you more ideas and choices. So don't assume that you can live that cheaply just because some other experienced foreigner shares their lower living costs online. You may never be able to achieve those lower living costs. We are all different. If you are new, you just don't have the skills yet and you may never have the patience, desire, or mental capacity to learn them. You may also have some impulses that keep you from controlling your behavior. I have a report about why some people fail when retiring overseas. I'll provide a link to that below for you. So what can you do if you want to live cheaply overseas but don't know how to do it yet? That's the purpose of this video. I have no advice about what you should do. I don't know anything about you or your ability to budget, but I do know about me. So I will share what I would do if I had a low pension and wanted to move overseas. 
what I would do if I was starting over again today. I left the United States in 2007. I've lived in 67 countries. I've learned a thing or two about living cheaply overseas. Now I will share with you what I would do if I was starting over again today. I will assume the following facts. I'll assume that my pension is $1,000 per month and that it would be adjusted for inflation over the years. Since we are assuming I'm new, I don't know what I'm doing when I first start. So although my pension is 1000 per month, I will assume that my living costs will be much higher for the first few months, maybe even a year, when I land overseas. That means I will need some savings before I go overseas. It will be my buffer while I'm getting started. More on that later. I will assume my flight is already paid for. I'm arriving in a city where I do not know anybody. Before I fly, I'll book a place for seven nights on Airbnb. Once on the ground, I'll spend the first week finding a place to stay for one month. I would use my How to Find Cheap Apartments guide, link provided. My goal would be to find an apartment for $500 per month for a small furnished place, including utilities that I would move into at the end of that first seven nights at Air in my Airbnb apartment. At this moment, someone's thinking, Dan, you can't rent apartments in my favorite tourist trap area for $500 per month. I agree 100%. You're right. But I have a question for you. Who do you think is cleaning your $700 per week condo in your favorite tourist trap area when you fly home after your one-week vacation? A local is cleaning your $700 one-week vacation condo, and they don't live in the tourist trap area. Would you be curious how they live? You should be. It might be the key to your earlier freedom. Their rent may only be $200 per month, not $700 per week. Maybe you don't want to live in a $200 a month apartment, but maybe you would be happy in a $300 or $400 per month apartment. Maybe you would find stores nearby, kids playing outside in the neighborhood, and old people walking their dog. What if it felt safe to you and people smiled at you in one of these local neighborhoods? So I would do that. I would spend the first month in my $500 per month apartment exploring the neighborhoods and determining whether I could get below $500 per month and feel safe in some other apartment. I would shoot for $300 per month or less in one of those neighborhoods. But here's the most important thing I would need to do. I would develop relationships with locals. When I say locals, I mean locals. If I were single, I would place an ad on a dating site and meet local women that way. If I were religious, I would go meet locals at church or whatever. If I enjoyed beer in the evenings, I would go to a local bar and chat with the locals. If I was uh, a gym rat, I would meet locals at a local gym. I would chat with the locals wherever I went. People always seem to open up when we smile. You could also hire someone to clean your house and do your shopping for you. Then pay them a few extra dollars per week to teach you how to do everything they do cheaply. They may even be willing to help you find a place with cheaper rents. Whenever I meet a local through any of the above methods, I would ask for their help. I would explain that I was considering retiring to their beautiful city, but I needed to learn more about the cost of living there, not how foreigners live, but how locals live. Then I would make a request. Where do they go to eat nearby when they're looking for a fairly priced lunch or dinner? Not an expensive place they only visit on special occasions, but a normal place where they eat frequently. Then I would offer to pay for their meal if they would show me their favorite foods there. If they joined me, I would be asking them all sorts of questions uh, while we tried their favorite foods. If they were too busy to join me, I would ask if it was okay to text them questions time to time about living in their country. I would keep meeting locals like this and learn such things as where to shop, what local neighborhoods are nice and safe, what local rent should be, and how locals get around town. The locals know how to get the most for their money. Very few foreigners have this sort of information because most foreigners have much higher budgets. Eventually, I would find someone that enjoys my company and also happens to know what I need to learn in order to bring my budget down substantially. Finding one or two locals willing to help me understand how to do things would accelerate my ability to manage my finances. If my pension was 1000 per month, my goal would be to find a local that lives on 600 per month. 
and I would learn how they're able to do it. What do they eat? What do they do for fun? Where do they live? Everything. I would see their home. I would ask about their neighbors' homes and rents if they know. How much do they spend on each budget item and how do they achieve that? Why would I want someone living on 600 per month in this example? Because I would want to, a little wiggle room in my budget to spend 200 more than they do. So my goal would be to live on 800 per month, which would, be, which would give me 200 more I could spend on, ni- on a nice place or a few nicer things that are most important to me. Plus, with a $1,000 per month budget, spending only eight, $800 per month, I would still be able to save some money each month for a rainy day or inflation or whatever. Why most foreigners don't do this? There are two main reasons why foreigners do not do it this way. The first and most common reason, they have a higher pension. So they have no reason to learn how to live on so little. Instead, they just learn everything they need to know by trial and error or from other foreigners they meet living overseas on higher pension. And the second reason, when people first move to a foreign country, everything feels odd to them for a year or two. So they look for other foreigners that have already been through it all. Locals don't understand what foreigners from the West are going through when they move to a lower cost country. So the locals are often unable to comfort new overseas retirees during this adjustment period. It's okay to make friends with foreigners for this emotional support. Just understand that when they invite you out for a beer or out to dinner, they may be taking you to hangouts where people living on 1,800 per month or more eat and drink. So entrees will be eight bucks instead of three. So you'll have to limit how many times you go out to eat and drink with other foreigners if you're trying to live on a more local budget. Instead, offer to meet them for a nice walk on the waterfront where you can chat for hours with very little money out of pocket. Okay, so what happens if you don't get your spending under control? If you're unable to get your spending under control and get it down to your goal numbers, you'll need to pull your safety parachute and fly home before you run out of money in a foreign country. So what is a safety parachute and how do you pull it? I explain that in the video appearing in the upper right-hand corner of your screen right now.